Hello, and welcome back to the podcast where you are invited for lighthearted conversations about things that matter as you seek to live your most meaningful, beautiful, and joyful life. I'm your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, and I hope you enjoy your stay here at the House of Joy. Dear ones, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. You guys, I cannot even believe the topic of today's podcast, which is another part in our series on unlocking emotional freedom. Do you feel more free yet? Tell me. Um, Today we're talking about embracing big emotions. And let me just set the stage for you. Okay. One week from tomorrow, we drive to Pittsburgh to see our baby girl graduate from dance college from Point Park, at which point she will be moving to New Hampshire for, I think, three months to, she got a job there to be in their musicals for the summer, this theater there. And then she will be moving to New York City. So her mother, who raised her in the tiny town of Bean Station, Tennessee, (laughs) (laughs) is having a lot of big emotions. Also, um, I have my daughter, Emmy, who just moved into a new house and is very likely going to be getting engaged sometime this year. I can hardly believe that. And then a month from now, our adoption is final for Tom. You guys, I can't function right now. I am having all the big emotions and my aura ring. I love my aura ring, by the way. By the way, Emmy had this great idea that for in celebration of our 200th episode on the podcast, we're going to give away an aura ring and we're going to make it fun with all kinds of giveaway stuff. I'm like, oh, you are treating the podcast people. They are going to love you. We are giving away an aura ring. But my aura ring has told me for the last, I don't know, four to six weeks that my sleep has been trending down and I'm trying to tell it, do you know what's going on in my life, aura ring? Do you know the big emotions that I'm having right now? Apparently it doesn't. Um, But I want to talk about this today because I think, listen, I'm 54 years old, you guys, and I have spent my life literally trying to not have big emotions. (laughs) like making myself wrong for the big emotions that I have, trying to figure out how to fix my emotions, trying to figure out, um, you know, like shaming and blaming myself for the emotions I have. And then I do all of this work in the personal growth space. And I realize, no, the purpose is to like allow and feel and welcome and embrace all these big emotions. And there has been no better teacher for this for me than my little Tommy boy. As you know, Stevie and I, I was in, I was 49. So late forties when we adopted our little Tom and he was five years old. Then he's now 11. No, he was six. He's now 11. You guys, he's going through puberty. He's changing so much, but he's not changing in a way. Like he yesterday was literally outside for four straight hours after school, hauling things, getting muddy, getting in the lake, um, just all kinds of bringing in a baby goose, which we had to tell him he needed to take back out to its mother. Um, So in some ways he hasn't changed at all, which I love so much, but he is a big emotions kid. How many of you raise your virtual hand if you're listening to this (laughs) And raise your virtual hand if you're watching on YouTube. If you have a kid with big emotions, he's a big emotions kid. And it has been so good for me in so many ways. He is the type of kid that is not at all suppressing his emotions. And he's had, you know, since we've had him, um, he's had a lot of therapy for like all the things that he's gone through, um, you know, as a child and just the loss, there's a lot of loss in adoption and just all the loss. Like he has, um, had good reason to have a lot of big emotions and he's the type of person that just gets them all out. Now that has been a struggle for me, his mama, because I spent my life trying to pretend like I didn't have any. And now I've got a child who has all the big emotions and me just trying to adjust to that and, 
making space for that and not making him wrong for that, but like helping him get those out. I was talking to his therapist about this a while back and we both decided like, oh my gosh, he's going to be so well adjusted to go into his teenage years because he's not internalizing anything. And I am or have been my whole life an internalizer. And I'm just learning how to do that. So let me tell you something, all you women in your forties or in your fifties or beyond, this is our era where we feel and embrace our big emotions. We do not need to be people pleasers anymore and try to tamp down ourselves and try to pretend like we're always fine and try to not have big emotions. We get to have all of our big emotions. Now it doesn't give up us a license to be mean to people, but we've, what we've got to learn how to do is to be kind to ourselves and acknowledge ourselves. And when we're having big emotions, allow ourselves to have them. And, uh, you know, over the last few years, since I've been practicing doing this, I literally am either on the verge of tears or laughing or frustrated. Like, I feel like I don't have as much of an in-between. I used to live my whole life in between. And now I feel like I don't really have as much in-between. It's just literally all the big emotions. I was reading this quote by Henry Nowen that says, we tend to stay away from mourning and dancing. Too afraid to cry, too shy to dance. We become narrow-minded complainers, avoiding pain, but also true human joy. While we live in a world subject to the evil one, we belong to God. Let us mourn and let us dance. Oh my gosh, that just made me kind of emotional. We belong to God. Let us mourn and let us dance. Let us have all the big emotions. So you better believe I will be showing up to all my big events <laughs> just on the verge of tears, letting the tears flow, allowing the big emotions. I feel like over the last few years in our family, it's just been a series of big things and it continues this year and I'm here for it. I'm so excited for it. I, I want to give myself space to allow that and to have that and to um, welcome the emotions that are coming our way. And I know if you're like me, you've probably been, you know, a lot the same way. You've tried to be a people pleaser. You've tried to kind of make yourself smaller. You've tried to, you know, um, live in such a way that nobody could have any issues with you, where you're always trying to make sure everybody else's emotions are okay. Isn't that how we live, you guys? We so much live trying to control other people's emotions where, you know, we feel, I mean, I really do think this is like the big lie of my early life. I thought it was my job to control everyone else's emotions. And I was not very good with my own at allowing my own, acknowledging my own or whatever. And if you've listened to this whole series, you know that that is just not a healthy way to live. But I was very concerned with everybody else's. Let me make sure she's okay. Let me make sure he's not mad. Let me make sure. <laughs> and I have just learned that it doesn't work to do that. We don't have control over anyone's emotions, but our own. And the best way to learn how to manage and create our own is just to allow for all that's already there. Allow, especially for those big, intense emotions. There's something about the, the big emotions, the intense emotions that just reminds us we're alive. There's something about even feeling angry. Literally for the first 45 years of my life, I could not be angry. I could not hold anger in my body. As soon as I would try, as soon as I would think I was going to be angry, I would just dissolve into tears. So now when I get angry, it's like I'm just a teeny bit proud of myself. Like, oh good, you can kind of be angry now. And I do think that when we allow ourselves the full range of emotions, we get the full range of what it means to be human. We get this big, expansive life instead of this life that we've tried to squish in a box and make so narrow and only feel, you know, a few certain emotions. Um, what happens when we do that is we limit our experience of joy. We limit our experience of, I think, the emotion that we were created to experience, which is this, that deep down satisfaction that comes from believing that we're loved, that everything's going to be okay. We start to see the world a different way. You guys, I don't know hardly anybody else who sees the world the way I do. I wear some rose colored glasses and I am so thankful that I have cultivated this way of seeing life. I am so thankful that I have cultivated 
um, the skills to experience more joy in my own life. It is, I would say, the master skill of life. But to get there, you have to be willing to feel the ones that feel hard to feel. You have to be willing to welcome the big emotions that you've probably pushed away or avoided for most of your life. And this practice for me, it has been a game changer. And I'm so thankful that God brought us Tom, that, that he has been a teacher to me in this area. Literally, emotions are just waves of energy that are meant to like, you know, move through us. And if you think about the contrast of emotions, I sometimes describe it like, you know, you're in an ocean of waves and your life around you kind of feels like an ocean. It kind of feels chaotic. And when you just relax and you just allow that to move through you, you can just kind of float and enjoy. But when you fight against it is when you get in trouble. And I just noticed that with Tom, he just allows them to move through him and then he's over it. And for me, I would resist them moving through me and then try to hold on to, you know, this sort of low level frustration or low level misery. He just lets it all move through him and then he's over it. And I have just learned so much from watching him do that. I really do think that's the way it's meant to be. And it's us as parents often who don't have tolerance for that and who don't have the skills ourselves. So then we don't really have the skills to validate our kids' emotions, to just, you know, I've gotten to the point where I just want to acknowledge like, oh, I'm sure that feels frustrating instead of going, you shouldn't feel that way. Or instead of like always, for instance, trying to make their emotions better, like he will get in the car often from school and have something that feels hard for him or something that he's mad about. And it's always my temptation, and I'm sure you can relate to this, to go, well, yeah, but you know, you have a lot of good friends. So if just one person says that, and it's kind of like when we do that, we're saying to them, like that part of you that it's kind of like you're saying, I don't believe you that you're hurt or that you're frustrated instead of just acknowledging like, oh, that must have been so frustrating. I can see why that was hurtful or see why that was frustrating. Just validating their big emotions. And I really believe that you get there by validating your own and being willing to sit with yourself with compassion and go, oh, I can see why you would feel that way. Of course you feel that way. Like, oh, that makes sense that you feel really angry. Um, sometimes it's the dumbest things in my own life that will like trigger me or set me off. And I'm like, interesting that that made me angry or that made me whatever. But I've learned to just sit with myself accept it, allow it to just pass through instead of telling myself, well, that's dumb. You shouldn't feel that way. And the more you can do that for yourself, of course, the more you can do that for kids. And I just think it's such a, it's just such a powerful skill to have you guys. So let's dance, let's play, let's mourn, let's have our frustrations and our anger. Let's let it all pass through us and learn to sort of allow the wisdom of those emotions, allow the message of those emotions. Um, and I think that as we learn to do that, we can be so much more present with ourselves, no matter what we're feeling. So what big emotions are you experiencing right now? And are you willing to allow it? I will probably just be a blubbering mess for the next month. So I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm just going to cry when I need to cry and feel sad when I need to feel sad and laugh and experience joy along the way too. So I hope that helps you. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you till next time. Also, thank you for listening to this podcast. You don't have to. And we are so appreciative of when you do. Thank you for the reviews you leave. We read them yesterday. Emmy and I were recording and we were reading some of your reviews and we were like, oh my gosh, they're so sweet and supportive. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing the podcast with your friends and family, with your daughters or with your mamas too. So, all right. I'll see you next time. Bye.